What do you feel about Boris Johnson being hospitalised? Well, he's a fellow human being, isn't he, Boris Johnson? So you feel compassion and sympathy. Not only that, he's a um, father and he's about to become father to another child. His partner is pregnant. Um, and I suppose, obviously, Boris Johnson to us, we don't know him. We don't know him personally, although I did meet him once. And he's actually rather striking, I must say, although... Um, I have concerns about like, how many people from that background do you want to have in charge of a country continually? It's a really odd thing. But of course, our ultimate reaction to any human being should be based on a, a humanitarian, compassionate response, unless they're literally placing us under attack. Perhaps one of the things that's complex about living in the time we live in is that we don't deal with real threat often we deal with abstract threat through a variety of layers with numerous complex mitigating conditions even something like a covid lockdown think of how many sort of factors there are there's the economic factor there's the medical factor there's whatever personal variation there is due to your own economic circumstances then of course we look back at how you arrived in that economic condition whether you think that's just and fair it makes you question all of society so of course i don't like our natural and the most pleasant reaction to Boris Johnson's uh, illness is to wish him well. But it also is a stark reminder of the ordinariness, normalness, humanness of our leaders, particularly at a time when we sort of unconsciously, in my opinion, want to kind of um, fate and admire and uh, worship seems like it's too strong of a word, but kind of submit to leadership, you know? Like this is a time of great sort of conservatism in many respects, isn't it? Like if, you know, if people break that lockdown, hey, you're breaking the lockdown. And you know, we love our NHS, we love our frontline workers. Like remember in 9-11 when the figure of the firefighter became newly uh, libidinized and adored, quite rightly but of course you know, there's a brilliant Kirby enthusiasm joke where he sort of says uh, come on Larry you know that my uh, my dad died on 9 uh, on 9-11 yeah but not in the towers he just died on that day you know that, that sort of that w because there is a global crisis occurring affiliation with the crisis has a kind of cachet and NHS workers are working hard all the bloody time. I mean, that's the point. The NHS is functioning, I believe, as a kind of um, god, like a pagan god in the pantheon of our nationalistic religious identity. It's the, it's the kind of compound of our compassion. Of course, at this time, we're aware of utility. The NHS is functioning and doing work and helping people and helping people that are sick. But what is it doing emotionally? What is it doing emotionally when people are applauding? It's essentially providing an emblem, a symbol around which we can all gather. But it, it would require almost kind of um, fundamental or like zealous myopia not to consider that the NHS should have been funded better always, that the NHS is in fact funded by all of us collectively through our taxation and we could completely renew and reinvigorate our priorities as a result of this, couldn't we? We could say right from now on, do you know what, with this, if we are going to have centralised authority, centralised taxation, these are our collective priorities. These questions are seldom asked. The, the variation on the dial, on the binary dial of modern democracy is in my view too narrow, too narrow, and perhaps can't broaden significantly or expand significantly without fundamental systemic changes to the way that we govern. And I say we govern, meaning that we should be participating in our own democracy, not having remote Westminster figureheads or White House figureheads that dominate and control us we sub because if you look at the lineage of that type of power of that type of sovereignty look at its evolution look at where it's come from even in instances like france america and russia where there has been r revolution the power structures that are subsequently instantiated mirror the their predecessors what I'm saying is, is that real revolution would look like a kind of a deracination of those structures and a establishment of truly, truly new ways of organising. So 
on a human level, Boris Johnson, and on every level really, there's no part of me that feels anything other than compassion and sympathy for anybody that's sick as a result of this. A friend of mine who has a very sick child and has done for a long time pointed out, he just sent me a picture of a florist delivering flowers to number 10 and said, oh, that's interesting. What kind of vital work are florists doing during this time? I suppose the, this outbreak more generally helps us to recognise inequality, helps us to recognise that some privileged people are locked down in comfortable environments afforded to them by economic good fortune, whilst others are experiencing something much closer to incarceration. The metaphor of urbanisation as a form of penitentiary is a well-worn one, i.e. we are all imprisoned by our economic roles, our social roles, our, our various other castings that we endure. And this lens, this new global lens, this uh, apparently ubiquitous condition, but with all of its myriad consequences that vary in accordance with your social standing and ability, it's a great prism for understanding inequality, for witnessing inequality, and I wonder how, what fluctuations we will observe as this goes on. Uh, it's a weird thing, isn't it? It's weird to see it affecting people, to see public figures die, to see the death toll daily rise, to take some delight in the suspension of growth in countries that seem to be further down this track, if indeed there is one track, than we are. So I would say that from a human level, um, Boris Johnson, like all leaders, because I no longer believe, like, I don't believe in um, kind of, uh, what do I want to say, discursive disdain or contempt or negativity, even if you disagree with people. I think finding common ground, finding compassion, finding love has got to be part of the solution. Isn't it weird when politicians step down, like Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson sort of says nice things about him and Jacob Rees-Mogg says nice things about him. You think, why don't you just be nice always? Why is it like, why is it that we've accepted? Oh, politics, everyone's got to be like an asshole all the time and make crazy noises in their parliamentary discussions. Why is it that we can't communicate with civility and love? Well, because of the customs and evolution of those systems and things that are now endemic within the system and that probably can't ever be meaningfully adjusted, should just be dispatched, dispensed with, moving power and control as close as possible to the people affected by true democracy is all I'm really advocating. So, um, yeah, uh, this is a time when we require authority, or at least we lead into it, but this, this, the authority and sovereignty that we are projecting onto political leaders, they are do you know this yet? Completely unable to provide because they are like you and me, fallible, flawed, vulnerable, flesh people that are going to get sick and die, if not now, then one day. And we need to find that sovereignty within the metaphor of sovereignty, the metaphor of the king, be found within all of us to find our own kingship from not to be born in the palaces of opulence where you might predict a messiah would be born, but in the stable, in the lowly place, is where you find your own kingship, your own sovereignty, to become the man, woman, or however you identify, to become truly that being. It, one of the components that must be shredded, shedded, lost, is that tendency to project power onto another. So what we can learn from our reaction to Boris Johnson's sickness is that we are projecting authority. The authority that's projected onto us is contingent upon our compliance, whether that's now in this pandemic or beyond it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it around, subscribe, and uh, you can send us a comment. We read them sometimes and I take particular delight in the cruel ones. <laughs> <laughs>